Hi there everyone, welcome back to Dandelion Delphi Tutorials. Today we are going to have a look at if statements and a little bit about algorithms. Just an introduction. So here is an example of an if statement. It has an if and a then and between the two comes what is called the condition. So we are going to start with inum and inum is a value that the person entered and I want to compare this number against a certain value. And in this case, we're testing if the number that the person entered is less than 5. So between your variable and possibly some hard code, there could also be uh, functions or other variables. We are going to place what is called an operator. And we have a couple of options here. This means is the number less than 5. This is, is the number less than or equal to 5? And it's important here that the equals comes after the less than sign. We can use any data type in our if statements. So as long as the what is on the left and the right of the operator um, is compatible. So I can put a string here and say that the pass, let's say the person entered a password and I stored it in S input. Is it in equal to this value on the right here? Then we have greater than sign. So is the number greater or equal to 5? Or is the number greater than 5? And then the last one is, is the number not equal to 5? Here's an example of an if statement in Delphi. And I am testing here if the mark, or mark, whether it is calculated or entered by the user, is greater than or equal to 80. If it is, I am counting this mark. Now, we haven't used ink I count before. It's the same as saying I count is assigned to I count plus one. Ink is called a procedure and it performs that instruction for you. So after this code ran, if I count was zero, set in form on activate, um, I count will now be one if the mark was 80 or more. And then I'm going to display the counter in my rich edit. Now, because this if statement has more than one line of code that needs to be executed, while if the statement is true, I need to group these two statements with a begin and an end. I recommend that after every end, you just put a comment to indicate who does this end belong to. So this end belongs to the if statement. Later on, you will have multiple ends underneath each other. And it's important to understand which one belongs to which structure. Then I have an else. So the else says if this statement is not true, that means the mark was less than 80. This code at the top will be ignored and the code underneath the else will be executed. Now, you know that every line of code ends here with a semicolon, but here is an exception. The single line above my else, in this case, it's the end, does not have a semicolon. So this is seen as one long line of code by Delphi. So in my else here, my else also has more than one line of code and therefore I have a begin and an end. And here I'm going to tell the, the learner to try harder if they were working for an A and I'm displaying their name in the rich edit. And next to my end of my else, I'm putting a little comment just to say this end belongs to my else. Note that your if and your else has their own set of begins and ends. They don't share a begin and end. Here is another way of how we can use a, an if statement. And here I've used the length function you've used before. And I'm testing if the length of the ID is not equal to 13. So I'm really validating if the ID is the correct length. And if it is not, I'm displaying a message, show a message. It's an invalid ID number. And I'm using this exit procedure. What this does is it stops the code running here. So nothing that follows this code will run in your procedure. Your program will continue to run, but the rest of this code won't run because we don't want to process an invalid ID. If you are using this if statement with the show message and the exit, you need to make sure that you put it between a begin and an end, else your exit will not be grouped under your if statement 
and it will always exit and never execute the code that goes below this line of code. So the begin and end is very important with this if statement. As you can see, we can have an if statement that does not have an else. So the else is optional. Here is an example of using what is called a nested if statement. So we have if statements inside of the else of another if. And I'm determining whether the person got a distinction, a pass, or a fail. So here at the top, I'm starting at the top. I'm testing if the person got a distinction. That means their percentage that was store, stored in this variable is 80 or more. If it is, it displays this message. And I'm also counting my number of distinction, distinctions. And then it ignores all this code here and continues whatever comes after this end at the end of the nested if. If this percentage was less than 80, it will go to the else. So R percent here, when it executes this if statement, will always have a value of less than 80. So now I can test if this person got a percentage of more than 50. This is university. So I'm testing is it 50 or more, greater or equal to 50. Then they get a pass and I'm out counting my number of passes. Now, if this person did not get a, a mark of 80 or more, and it's not greater or equal to 50, it means this percentage is less than 50. So this last else of mine does not have an if statement, because I only have three options. And if it's not a distinction or a pass, the option I'm left with is that it's a fail. And here I'm also counting my failures. What you see in front of you is an algorithm, so it does not contain actual code. And if any programmer, regardless of their programming language, should be able to read this algorithm and then implement it in their specific coding language. So here at the top, it says when the program starts. In our case, using Delphi, that would be in form on activate. I'm going to initialize a counter. Now what I'm doing here in this button is I'm determining what is the highest score as well as what is the person's name with the highest score. These arrows here is showing that the value on the right is giving something on the left a uh, value. And this in your code will be replaced by an assignment statement. So what I'm doing here is getting input for the current click. So the person one clicks there, enters their score and their name, and I'm storing this input from the user in two variable names. You'll call this maybe I score and S name. And now I am incrementing my counter. I can use ink I count, but I've just reminded you that if the counter is on both sides of the assignment statement, we need to initialize it and that we've done when the program starts. So what I'm doing here is I'm making the first person the person with a high score. So far, it's the only score entered. So therefore, it is the best score. It's like being your parents only child. You are both the best and the worst child you have because you are the only one. So here when I have the counter is one, that means that it is the first person entering a score. I'm storing this current score as the high score. And I'm also keeping their name to be able to display it later. So since this is a nested if, when the counter is one, it will only execute this top part of the code. The next time that the button is clicked, a new score is entered, a new name is entered, but now counter will be equal to two. So my if statement is testing if the counter is one. No, it's not because it's two. So from here on, it will always go to my else. And in my else, I'm testing if the current score that the person entered is higher than the previous score stored in my variable high score. If it is, I'm storing the current score as high score and the current person's name as high name. And so it will continue to calculate the high score until I'm done. And now I can display here at the bottom, I can display the person's score as well as the name of the person who had the highest score. Another operator that is often used with if statements is the in operator. And the in operator is quite handy, but what is important to remember is the in operator can only 
make use of ordinal values. Now, ordinal values are either integer or chars. And in this case, what I'm doing is I'm testing if inum is either a value. So is it, is it in the following set of numbers? So is inum equal to 2 or 5 or 21 or 30? It's another form of validation. Note that n uses the square brackets to indicate the values that inum can possibly be. I can also check a range of numbers, consecutive numbers. So here I'm testing if the number entered was in the range 8 dot dot 12. Note there's just two dots. And this means is the number a value 8, 9, 10, 11 or 12. I can also test if this number is not a value from 8 to 12 by doing the following. Here's an example of if it's not a value from 8 to 12. Now what I want you to note is that there is round brackets here. You can see them going blue now for the not. So the not says if this statement here is not true. So I can use this if statement to test if a value entered. We will have some input for inum above this line. This is just an example for you. And to test if the number is a value from 8 to 12. If it is not, I can display a message and exit my procedure. This is now your time to practice. So open your example program that we started in the previous lessons. And in the button, click add the code to achieve the following. And test your output to see if you get the same output as in the example here. Press pause. I'll soon show you the memo. The first part asks us to test if the length of the cell phone number um, is valid. We needed a cell phone number that contains 10 digits. Now you've stored the cell phone number in the first lesson as a string. So we can use the length function to test if the length is not equal to 10. Then I display a message and I exit the procedure. Remember your begin and end year for this if statement. The next part is asking to test if the mark is a valid mark. And valid marks were values from 0 to 70. In my in operator, I'm testing if the value is a value from 0 to 70. And I'm adding a not here in the front, remember the round brackets, to say if it's not a value of 0 to 70, display a message that it's an invalid mark, and then exit the procedure. And here's my nested if. So I'm determining whether the person got a distinction, pass or fail. I start at the top and I'm testing if the percentage that I calculated before is 80 or more. Then it is a distinction and I'm storing distinction in S pass so that I can display it later. Then if it's not 80 or more, I'm testing against 50 or more and that's a pass. Else I'm storing S pass as a fail. Here is your time to practice again. What we want to do is we want to calculate who had the highest and who had the lowest mark. And this part of the code needs to be added inside of your button click. And then once you have completed that in the summary button, I'm going to display highest and lowest. It is important that you store these variables for highest and lowest uh, names and, and the mark. You want to store them as global variables so that the value can be retained in these variables from one click to the next. Push pause so that I can show you the memo. And here is the memo. So I am testing if it's the first person. The first person becomes the highest and the lowest values. And then from the second person, I am testing if this current person's score is higher than the previous value that was stored in R high. If it is, I am storing their name and surname. And then in this nested um, if statement, I am then comparing their score to see if they might be the lowest one. And these values, R low, S low, R high and S high, can then be displayed in your summary button. Here in your summary button, you will see I have the values displayed there of the highest and the lowest. Please remember to leave some comments if anything is unclear or if there's anything else you need to know. In my Dandelion Delphi Book 1, you'll find many activities that will help you practice the if statements. Hope to see you soon!